I'm still gonna have a good week. Long as the Eagles lose, I'm still gonna have a good week. Everybody loses, I'm still having a good week. Cause we still in it by one game. God damn it. Jason fucking Garrett, seriously? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Is that what y'all went through for 10 years? Exactly. Well, we actually had a good team. What? Oh, now, now you want to see, see the shit now. When he with y'all. When we together, when y'all live there. How do you fucking call place? Mmm. Well, good hump day morning friends mark holmes here of course joe booze at the red brick house waiting for me to get back down there but we do have joe bear here and as always i want to say thank you all for watching commenting subscribing and being part of the joe boo sports report without you guys as well as you ladies you know that this literally does not work and let me say shout out to all of you guys we passed sixty-three thousand subs um it was just last month we hit 60. Now all of a sudden we are just blowing up. And I'm betting if the Cowboys end up beating the Eagles that that number is going to drop by about five or 6,000 as the cockroaches exit the building. We know that the Eagle fans are going to exit the building. It's kind of crazy because right now, here's what is so crazy. This is how you know that we're in, that, that, that I am living rent free in Eagle fans' head. I was actually looking because YouTube has in their, in their studio um, all kinds of analytics. And in there, you can actually see geographically cities that your views come from. The number one city, of course, is Dallas. But you know what the number two city is? Do you? Do you, punk? Philadelphia. I'm, I'm literally blown away that the number two city that views comes from is Philadelphia. So let me say shout out and thank you, Philadelphia. Thank you for loving, hating, despising the Joe Boo Sports Report. Okay, we, we, appreci we appreciate it. Trust me, we do. Okay, so we have... Cowboys versus Eagles in what may be the biggest regular season game that the Cowboys have played since maybe the 90s. This game is huge. It's not going to be, we, if we lose this, that we're not going to make the playoffs or something like that. But this is an opportunity to let the world to say, hello world, we're here. We can finally bury the narrative that we can't beat, beat good teams. We, we did get... The Seattle Seahawks, but now everybody's kind of questioning. They're not really a good team. They're, they're kind of like a half a tomato can. I get it. I get it. And I understand it completely. If you want to be the man, you got to beat the man. And right now, the Philadelphia Eagles are the man. And we got to beat them. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Now, today's the first day of practice. They'll get back on the field. It's sounding like Dallas Goddard is going to be back. He says he's like 80, 85 percent feeling good. And of course, he wants to enact some revenge. We don't know how Jalen Hurts actually really is. Jalen Hurts, who got hit in the head and was in concussion, you know, being checked for concussions, uh, went to the locker room and Jalen Hurts, who. I believe he only had two runs in that game. Don't quote me on that, but I think he only had two runs. He is not the weapon that he was last year with his legs the way he was. He just is not. And that defense, oh my, that defense literally. Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? Let's no, go. they suck. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, Caleb Carter? It's like, they shit on you. They've shit on you. They have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, Caleb Carter? It's like, they shit on you. Kill them. Oh, my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them? I hate the style of defense. I 
Yeah, so there's that, that we have cock out on them. Let's be clear. So far, the Dallas Cowboys are the healthier team. We're playing at home. We're a a three-and-a-half-point favorite, but you can throw all that shit out the window. The Eagles got embarrassed this past week. They are pissed off. They hate the Dallas Cowboys. And the Cowboys, if you are not up right now, if you are not like a shark that, that smells blood in the water, if you are not ready for a feeding frenzy, and if you are not ready to finish him, then you don't belong in the football field. This is where the Lions need to eat. This is where you can make a statement and take all of the crap that you have heard from all these talking heads and make them eat crow. You just can. And this should be the MVP game. Last week, Jalen Hurts was the number one guy as far as MVP conversation. And tepidly, this week, it's Dak Prescott. I dare say... Dak goes out here and the Cowboys destroy the Eagles. Dak goes out here and does what Dak Prescott does against the Eagles, where uh, I've got to look back at the numbers, but I believe over the last six games, he's like 20 TDs and one interception or something like that. If he has a game like that, it's hard to argue that he is not the MVP. I'm just saying, I, I but all that stuff comes out in how you play. And this is huge. I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm still kind of under trying to understand with the week being this week, this week being the Cowboys versus the Eagles with you are two of the top three teams in the NFC with the division on the line that I have not been hit by Philly 500. I, I've got a person that lives out in the town that he lives in. He's talking about making a sign, you know, missing sign to put up on the street corners and on telephone poles to try and find out where Philly 500 is. Usually by now, I've heard five or six videos where the Cowboys stink, Dak Prescott is ass, ass, and that they suck. Usually by now, we're hearing, you know, uh, Shady McCoy talking about MVP and Dak is ass, ass. Instead, we're hearing that we're not worried about the Eagles. It wasn't really that bad, unless it becomes a pattern against the Cowboys. Let me check out this morning what they had to say on Get Up before I get out and get back to the Red Brick House. And because of you guys, you guys said, since we are 3-0 and at the Red Brick House, we need to ride that puppy. We need all the mojo we can get. We will be at the Red Brick House for the game. Let's check in. Dominant during the Cowboys' current four-game win streak, he will host fellow MVP candidate Jalen Hurts and the Eagles in what some are saying is the biggest regular season game of Dak's career. Here was that nine. yesterday on how his Cowboys stack up against the top of the NFC. Well, I'm not saying it's clear. It may be clear to you, and that, but it's not clear to me. I will say this. We sure have the opportunity. We've got the talent the way Dak is playing. I don't know that I've ever seen him play any better. And we've got the opportunity to win any game we play against either of those teams. Mm. All right, so we will see. They haven't had uh, any success against the 49ers, who may be turning this thing into the San Francisco Invitational one way or another. But... Swagoo, I'll start with you, my beloved former Cowboy who's up and ready to go this morning. <laughs> Cowboys going in there. I've, I've got people telling me this is a statement game for Dallas. This is the biggest regular season game of Dak's career. Do you see it that way? Well, I guess he... We're having some trouble this hmm. morning. I assume I'm not the only one who doesn't hear him. No, nope, don't it, hear him. No, don't yeah, hear so we have some issues. I'm so sorry we're having some technical stuff today. We'll get that worked out with Swagoo. Mark, I mean, uh, Lewis, yes, I'll ask sir. you the same question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is this the biggest game of the, of the, of the, of the Cowboys and, and in its own way maybe of Dak's regular season career? Yeah, I, I think it is because, look, we're, we're talking about levels with Dak now, right? Look, Dak's always been a good quarterback, but he's taken it up a level over the past four weeks. Look, he's, they've only they scored more than 40 points in every game except for one. Mm. It was against Philadelphia and against San Francisco where this offense really didn't put up the 30 plus type of point uh, production that they are accustomed to, to putting up. And I think right now, look, if you go back and watch that first game, 
He played as good as you could possibly ask him to play against Philadelphia. It was about finishing. It was about yeah. making sure that receivers are running routes to the proper depth. Dak not stepping out of bounds when he's going in, making sure the ball crosses the goal line. It's about the little things. He did not fundamentally break down in that first game, but it's about finishing now. And I think what you have seen him do is he's established a lot of the habits right now that are befitting of a guy who is worthy of being an MVP candidate, and he needs to finish the deal now. Kmart, I understand that the narrative is all going to be about Dak needing to prove something, but the way I've had people in here talking about Philly ever since that game on Sunday, and the way the Philly fans are all up in my mentions and Hembo over there and the rest of the negative Philly all of them are Oh, well. All the, uh, they, are, all up in the they are up in my mentions in my telling me, oh, Sirianni needs to be fired, and this guy and our oh. coordinator stink, and all, all this yeah. kind of, they act like this is a measuring stick for Philadelphia more than it is for the Cowboys. Who needs to prove something to wow. Sunday? Oh, well, Dallas needs to prove something to mm, Kmart. Okay. Um, no, because think of about course. it. The Cowboys have won 14 straight at home, uh, second longest streak in, fran streak in franchise history. But they played exceptionally well since that loss to the, to the 49ers. That 49ers loss was almost like a TKO. Like, mm -hmm. oh, they just took that, that ass whooping and had to go home and said, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> but losing to the Eagles after that, it was sort of like, oh, that's their best shot? Okay, bet. Like, we can, we can keep up with the champs. And I think the Cowboys are playing different. Dak is playing different. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's always about the moments for the Cowboys. And they have an opportunity. <laughs> the Eagles Excuse open me. the door just a little bit. They have an opportunity at home to show – hey, we are not just a team that can win this division. We're a team that can actually get to the Super Bowl. What do you think, Jeffrey? Yeah, I, I, I would say this. When you think about the Eagles, they didn't play their best against Dallas. And every, all Dallas fans are like, well, look, we can play with them. Well, the Eagles didn't play great either, right? And so from their standpoint, they're going, we didn't play our best and we still beat them. Mm -hmm. Their biggest issue is coming off of what happened with San Fran. They're not worried about the Cal – they're worried about San Fran. That's where the Eagles' mind is. It's a must win for the Eagles because of what just happened. As bad as they played in the second half against San Fran, they got – they, they, they were physically dominated. And I think from the, from the Eagles' perspective, if you look at the way they found ways to win throughout this entire season, it all leads back to physicality. They need to go show not only the Cowboys but themselves where they stand Jeff, on that. Jeff, that, that is going to be the deciding factor. That, yes. That's where the levels are coming right now in the NFC in particular. Mm -hmm. That's where – look, San Francisco, San Francisco has established an identity over the past three years of being – like, seriously – it's a different level when you play this football team from a physical perspective. Yep. Yes. I don't care what you think you have in your arsenal as far as your playbook, your situational clock manage. If you cannot match the intensity that you're right about that, plays with, they're going to beat no you down. Team. No one has shown that they can do that really right now. On offense, so you, when you, on everybody who, when they're playing at their very best, you're still a level below San Francisco right now. Yeah. We will talk about the Niners in a minute because <laughs> – their, their biggest and meanest star had some fascinating yeah. things to say about that matchup. But I do have Marcus back. So, Mar Marcus, let's t take our Cowboys hat off here. Cowboys hat. Yeah, there you go. The, the conversations have been fascinating this week. Cowboys are sort of going this way. Eagles, despite having the best record, people perceive them to be slightly moving in the opposite direction. Who needs to prove something to you this Sunday at the game in Arlington? Yeah. It's Dallas, G. Um, and, and I understand where Jeff is coming from with Philly coming off the San Francisco loss, but we came into this season talking about moments with the Dallas Cowboys. We've seen them win 12 games two years back to back. We've seen them have success offensively before. It's about how they play in these particular games. And I think Lou alluded to it. It's about Dallas and who they are to themselves, right? If the way we're looking at the NFC picture, if you can't compete with Philly, and you can't compete with San Francisco, you can't win a Super Bowl. You can't get to where you want to be. And the critical talk coming into this season was about Dak Prescott. The one thing Dak has done this year is answered up until this point if he can be the reason why Dallas wins games. The way mm -hmm. he's playing right now, he can be the reason they win games. But ultimately, and I hear the San Francisco thing came up. I'm going to tell you all this now because Lou is absolutely right about the physicality and they playing on a different level. The only way you beat San Francisco is if your quarterback plays out of his mind. Mm -hmm. That's what history yep. tells us. History mm -hmm. tells us Patrick Mahomes had to play out of his mind mm -hmm. to win this game. Yeah. It tells us that Matthew Stafford had to play out of his mind mm -hmm. to win that game in the NFC Championship. It's about four. It was about him when he came into the season. It's going to be about him then. And we know that teams are going to make plays, but your quarterback has to be the difference when you play that the is. 49ers. 
time. That's the Let's truth. Let's get to the 49ers coming up in a moment because, as I told you, their biggest and baddest All right, we can, was we can. not mincing words when he was talking about that Eagle game. Oh. There we go. There we have it. This could be the biggest game of Dak Prescott's career. Hmm. We'll have to wait and see how this goes. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And uh, let the games begin. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Our coach here, as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report. Thank <laughs> you.